Oh, hello, dear viewers. Uh, this is Flash TV, and we are uh, with uh, the ambassador of, uh, Swede of, of Sweden in Rwanda. And uh, we are going to have a very short interview about Girls Takeover as a global initiative and also um, from the organization of Plan International aimed at str uh, strengthening girls' uh, rights. Um, the, the event of this year uh, takes place in relation to the International Day of the Girl Child uh, Day. Um, and uh, the Swedish Embassy in Kigali has decided uh, to participate in this year's event. Uh, practically, the setup is that a teenage a girl in uh, is uh, a teenage girl is participating in the embassy's work during a day, right? Yes. Uh, so um, thank you. Uh, we are going to have a very short interview, but I know it's going to be very sweet. Now, uh, let me welcome you to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me or for having us. Uh, I'm so very happy to be here. Okay. Uh, how are you feeling, uh, Emily? I'm feeling great and so excited to be here and I feel like I'm happy actually. You're happy. Yeah. And it's actually like a great opportunity for me as a girl to raise up my voice and speak for my fellow girls. Yeah, it's a great thing. According to you, what does girls' rights mean uh, in the development of the country? Um, let, let me say something about my starting point and where I'm coming from. Uh, Sweden has a feminist foreign policy. So when we look at women's rights and girls' rights, uh, we always try to do it from the perspective of what we call the three R's. We look at resources, representation and, uh, and rights. Um, and it's also very important, of course, to have a thorough analysis of the context and to know where to go in and where the needs are. Um, I think also in general, uh, it's important to say that girls and girls' situation um, has to consider the fact that girls are often doubly discriminated. It's both a fact that they are girls yeah. and also that they are younger, that they are youth. Um, when we look at the situation here in Rwanda, um, uh, uh, there's been a lot of progress and I think as, in, as everywhere, I mean there are areas where there's still improvement to be made. And I think two areas that are very important for us is first the area of sexual and reproductive health and rights, uh, where we've seen recently an increase of teenage pregnancies and an increase in gender-based violence. And of course, this affects girls uh, and their possibilities to, to go forward in, in life. They drop out of school, uh, then they have less opportunities when it comes to work, etc. Uh, so it relates to the fact that there's also an increase uh, or that girls are worse off when it comes to dropout rates in school uh, than boys are. Mm -hmm. um, so these are two areas that I think are, are, are key uh, for the future development. Mm. And I know you've been to different countries. Then how do you compare Rwanda and the rest of the countries in terms of girls' rights? Personally, I think it's important to compare Rwanda with Rwanda's own path, where you are coming from and where you want to go. I think often that's more important than comparing Rwanda uh, to other countries. Um, and I think Rwanda has come far. Uh, we all know that Rwanda, when it comes to gender equality, Rwanda is obviously one of the countries leading in the world uh, when it comes to many, um, uh, many of the indicators. But it doesn't mean that there are still things to be done. Uh, so I think in this sense, I think, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights, both when it comes to comprehensive sex education and what can be done there, and when it comes to youth corners and, and access to services, that that works. I think those are for me very key priority areas. We are also with uh, Bjorksenje Melin. Uh, Melin, uh, as of uh, her background, we can see she's just 18 years old, um, and she's, you're soon joining the final year in high school, right? Yeah. When is that? Yeah, this year actually. This year? Um, Mm. And you've been participate, uh, participating in sexual uh, reproductive health and rights uh, work in her school, right? Yeah. Uh, through uh, the project of strengthening child uh, protection, right? Am I, am I, am I now exactly. the same, right? So um, tell us a little bit about you. How did you find yourself in this way of, of SRHL? Yeah, actually, thank you. Yeah, I have been working in plan 
International Day's project of strengthening a child since uh, 2019. Yeah, it's been th three years. Uh, How old were you? Yeah, I was actually like 15, still young, yeah. I was turning 16. So like, it was a great opportunity, although I wasn't getting the point very well. Like, Mega, how can I stand for my rights in sexual reproductive health and rights, stuff like that. It was somehow confusing. But because I was used of, of talking in public, speaking, yeah, in debates, yeah, I actually met Plan and they came to facilitate us and they asked us who are confident to talk about this, who are confident to do, you know, who is sharp to make something like to talk for the federal girls who can make these things, who have understood the well our project. Then I, I raised up my hand and I'd be like, I can, why not? Then they'd be like, can you really? I said, yes, I can. Then they said like, then you try to show us what you can. Then actually that day I was nervous, you know, <laughs> I was somewhat nervous. But what I got to understand was like, me not getting this opportunity I won't be someone who can talk for my fellow girls who don't have this opportunity. So then it made me feel strong and raise up my voice. Yeah, and then you see me for today. Mm. So uh, regarding to this year's uh, theme, uh, online harassment, right? It's, it talk, it, we're talking much about online harassment. How would you compare this uh, with how uh, girls' rights are being respected here in Rwanda? Yeah, yeah actually, as the same talks, it says like online ha harassment and the many of us we know that particularly in girls they are facing this harassment and bullying which actually affects and affects their freedom of expression of speech their feelings which is actually a great thing that they have thought of it because these girls who face this these challenges, like being harassed on uh, on social medias, on internet, yeah, they face a great, a great like, a great challenge. If I can't talk on my social media, which I have created on my own, then I won't talk in public. I won't express my my feelings to people. I won't make a decision on my own, which is actually something which is like pulling down girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, now coming back to the ambassador, uh, you've decided to work with uh, Emily, and uh, throughout maybe the, the, the this way you're going to participate in in this year's uh, Girls' Day, International Day. So why did you choose to work with Emily, and what is she going to contribute to the project? I think uh, Plan International and the work they are doing is super and we want to support it and we're very happy to have Emily with us. Um, it's a possibility and an opportunity for us to give visibility to something we think is very important. I mean, girls are the future of the country. Uh, they will be mothers and bring up families. They are going to be our future leaders in business, uh, in tourism like you want to do, etc. Uh, so it's really about supporting the course uh, and providing a platform for, for the message to come out directly. Uh, that's what we want to do. Mm. For us, of course, it's important to say that there's a reciprocity in why we're doing this because we have a lot to learn. So because we, have, we share similar concerns in the area of sexual and reproductive health and rights, for example. So listening and hearing the perspectives, it makes us do a better job. Mm. So why did you decide to participate and what is going really to be your role in this year's International Day of the Girl? I mean, our role is, um, is we're having discussions so that uh, Emily will get to know our work and the way the embassy works. Um, and then we're having a lunch on the team of, on the theme of this year's theme with a, with, a, with a group of people to hear what they have to say and reflect together. Uh, and to see if there's something we can do to support that area. Um, and then uh, Emeline will also speak to the embassy and provide her perspectives to, to all of us. Uh, so I'm sure this will strengthen the way we do our work and our understanding of, of the challenges. Mm. Now, Emeline, 
How does it feel to work with the uh, Swedish Embassy? Yeah, actually, as you see in my eyes, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing to me. And as I said before, it's a great opportunity, actually. Like me, standing for the, my fellow girls, uh, the youth, particularly girls, it's a great thing. And I think I will use this opportunity to make more things change and make also my fellow girls feel like they can speak, they can make decisions, and they can even stand in the embassy as I did, and they can actually raise up their voice. And it's a great thing, yeah. Mm. Any expectations from working with the embassy? Yeah, actually, I expect a lot. <laughs> yeah, as they, I like that. Yeah. Go. One, two, or three. Yeah, so many. Of course, for from the team, I expect, firstly, from my fellow girls who are watching me for today, they will challenge what they thought. What they thought they can't stand, they can't speak. Yeah, the government or the 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 NGOs they are not helping them. They see that they are being supported. Like me here, I'm also supporting my fellow girls. Yeah, and another change I think in my my community, they will get to understand more. They will get to see more that girls we can, girls we can talk, we can make decisions, we can talk for our fellow youth, our fellow girls. Yeah, and I think also my this. NGO will help a lot because if I show them the challenges that we girls we are meeting, it will be a great opportunity for them to stand now. They help us where they know what we are facing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Ambassador, uh, allow me to ask you this question. Uh, are you going to work with Emeline only or there is also other, a group of other girls you want to work with or with the rest of uh, the different girls you want to work with? I think this is the second time we do this. It, it's a bit of a one-shot event, um, but the uh, participant who was with us two years ago is also joining us for lunch to give it a continuity and to, to keep taking in the opinions. Uh, I think when it comes to listening to youth in the longer run, I think we as an embassy have to think of what we can do to institutionalize uh, the youth perspective more in, in the way we're doing. We, also, we always will include that in our contributions, etc. Uh, but there's always more space. I'm not sure it will be you exactly, yeah. uh, but I think it's important to just be certain that uh, we always consider the various perspectives of our stakeholders uh, and youth being very important. And now, Emeline, we are now proceeding. Do you have any message that you can uh, give to the fellow girls or maybe people outside here who, uh, who, who find themselves in these crimes of uh, harassing girls online? What would be your message today if you were given a chance to say so? Yeah, thank you. I actually, first to my fellow girls, my beloved ones, I want to first encourage them to stand for their rights and know their worth and value and stand for their decisions, their rights. And I want actually to tell the people who are making this harassment, just like, is like warning them because it's actually a great challenge which our fellow sisters, brothers you are facing, you are making these sisters of yours feel like ashamed of their bodies, feel ashamed of they, them living on the world. Yeah, I first wish like to tell them who is watching and the one who will know that I have to say this, to stop this because it's something which really affects our future. As she have said, we are the mothers. Yeah, and actually I would like to tell the whole community, like our community, to stand and strengthen the girls and support girls, yeah, which will help them to stand for their rights and make their own decisions, yeah, which will create actually the bright future. Okay, uh, as we proceed, Ambassador, um, now talking about online harassment and also your participation in the girls' rights. Mm. Uh, now, what would be your, what is your aim today as the Swedish Embassy in Rwanda uh, in participating in also having your role uh, 
uh, fighting against people or other kind of groups of people that uh, really disrespect, don't value girls in Rwanda? I think uh, on, on the world scale, 50% of harassment is towards girls below 16 years of age. Uh, and of course, a lot of that is online. Um, I think my expectation today is really to speak to, to the experts who knows and who people are who are also suffering and who are subject to this to understand really what is going on, to have a bigger idea. And not only when it comes to seeing the challenges, but also the solutions identified, Certainly. what could be done yeah. uh, to move forward and together work in order to counteract this. Uh, it's um, <laughs> it's beyond my comprehension that we treat girls in that way and that there's such a negative focus on bodies, for example, rather than lifting each other and empowering yeah. uh, the future generation to really uh, become who they are meant to be and yeah. to contribute to society. Uh, so I think let's see, let's know more about the challenges on different media, what form it takes, and let's know more about how people are working with it and how they would like to work with it. And then we can see what we can do as an embassy to support this cause. Now, what would be a message you could give to Rwandans, you could give to uh, people who are watching this, and uh, what would be their role in, uh, that they could play in, uh, in helping you uh, uh, to also uh, emphasize what has been there, what has been done by the government of Rwanda and several parties or bodies in Rwanda. Uh, what is the message you can give them? I think on a very general level, I would say, of course, that girls' rights are human rights. Uh, yeah. So they're important in themselves and they're important as a means um, for everyone. Uh, it's the basis, the very core of human rights. Um, I think my message is that we can't sit still, that uh, when it happens we have to act and find support in each other and that um, there are many people, uh, agencies, institutions supporting this um, and that we, we need to work together to ensure that we overcome these challenges and, and obviously for the people who are still committing harassment etc, it just needs to just stop, yeah. it's not it's not worthy, it's not worthy for yourself yeah. and, and the youngsters, the future of Rwanda is so better. Now, uh, Ayumi, thank you for having us today. Uh, I hope to have more of the conversations and uh, interviews where necessary. Uh, thank you, let me really thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you to you, mm. but thank you mainly to Emeline for sharing her time with us. Yeah. Really. So uh, this was uh, a very good and a very sweet interview with the ambassador of uh, Sweden in Rwanda, uh, alongside with Emeline Buxenje, who is also taking part in uh, uh, fighting against people who uh, who di disrespect uh, girls' rights and also. Uh, trying to uh, develop herself in in, in SRHL, right? So. Um, this was about uh, the participation of the Swedish Embassy in this year's event, ta Girls Takeover uh, by uh, Plan International. And uh, I know it's still going to work. We hope the best. Thank you for your time. Thank you. See you again. Thank you. <laughs> so.